Anyone who is unwilling to say that he is unfit to be president of the United States is unfit themselves to be president of the United States. Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, the chief Trump critic in the Republican primary field, dropping out of the race tonight. Before he dropped out tonight, there had been a lot of armchair speculation that if he dropped out, that might most benefit Nikki Haley. Haley does appear to be the most viable candidate against Trump right now, but Steve Kornacki knows these things. He's been looking at these numbers. We're going to be talking with him in just a moment. One last thing before we do that, though, I will note that just before Christie's prepared remarks where he dropped out, he was also caught on a hot mic, apparently commenting on Haley's chances of beating Trump and winning the nomination. He himself did not seem to think highly of those chances. Here is what he said. Yeah, I mean, look, she spent $68 million so far just on TV. Spent 68 million so far, 59 million by DeSantis, and we spent 12. You know, and she's going to get smoked, and you and I both know it. She's not up to this. She hasn't even been. Challenged. She's still 20 points behind Trump in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Steve Kornacki, you have been looking at this scientifically speaking. Is Nikki Haley, in fact, going to get smoked? Well, I think it depends what state you're talking about. And I think that gets to a key question when we look ahead to the bigger picture of the Republican uh, nomination battle here. It's in any given state, who makes up the electorate? What's the demographic mix in these Republican electorates? And just show you here our most recent poll. And this is a couple weeks ago. We're going to have a final one this weekend with the Des Moines Register. But this is our most recent Iowa poll. Donald Trump way, way in front. That battle for second between DeSantis and Haley. And it's explained by dissecting the Iowa electorate. This is the group that's powering Donald Trump more than any other. Evangelical Christians. In the 2016 caucuses in Iowa, they were almost two-thirds of the electorate, nearly two Two out of every three votes cast in those caucuses were by evangelical Christians. Trump lost them by double digits in 2016. He's now running up massive margins with them. You see Haley's barely in double digits. Where is Haley doing well in Iowa? Comparatively speaking, it's among independent voters. They make up about a fifth of the Republican electorate in Iowa. And there you still see Trump in our poll ahead, but Haley's uh, closest to him over 20 percent. And we'll see in our poll this weekend, there's indications elsewhere she's been gaining with independent voters. Maybe it'll be higher in our final poll. We'll take a look at that. But that's why Trump's so far ahead and Haley's so far behind in Iowa. Take a look at New Hampshire. We've had a bunch of new polls come out, average them together. This is a very different picture. Mm -hmm. Trump is still in the lead, but Haley's only 11 points behind on average. You see Christie sitting there at 12 percent. A ton of Christie support come, has come in New Hampshire from independent voters, and that is also true with Nikki Haley. In all three recent polls in New Hampshire, she has led among independent voters. And independent voters in New Hampshire make up a, a very bigger portion of the electorate than in Iowa and in any other state. Just take a look at this. This is comparing the demographics of the Republican caucus electorate in Iowa. This is from 2016 with the New Hampshire Republican primary electorate. Look at this. In Iowa, we said it's nearly two-thirds evangelical. In New Hampshire, it's a quarter evangelical. Independent voters, a fifth of the Iowa electorate, more than 40 percent in New Hampshire. And remember, in 2016, there were Democratic and Republican primaries in New Hampshire at the same time. Not much of a Democratic race this year. When it's been one party having a primary, the independents tend to be even bigger. So we could have something close to 50 percent independent vote in New Hampshire. Moderates, again, 14 percent in the Iowa Republican caucuses, double that in New Hampshire. This is a, a demographic mix that's tailor-made for a candidate like Nikki Haley, who's doing very well with independents, doing very well with college-educated Republicans, suburbanites. The problem for Nikki Haley is that when you get beyond Iowa and New Hampshire and all the other Republican primaries and caucuses out there, the demographic mix tends to look a lot more like Iowa and a lot less like New Hampshire, and that includes what could be the next big contest coming out of New Hampshire, South Carolina, a month later. The evangelical share in Nikki Haley's home state of South Carolina, 72% in mm. 2016. Steve Karnacki, thank you very much.